Gragas. Yasuo dropped away. Jax was a great Gragas player. Jungle Elise in the mid cast and also removed here. Yeah, so normally I'd be so like, oh yeah, first pick Elise because that's what we saw most of today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Elise is banned away this time. So uh, Annie is fairly popular. I think Fabi always loves to play very aggressively. Yeah. In lane, to say the least. And yeah. I think Annie would enable that type of support play the most uh, from anything that they'd be able to throw out if they're Curse Academy. If I yeah. had to predict a first pick. You think Annie? Or Shivana. Or that's what they're having or Shivana. <laughs> yeah, okay, that one. As I look over and back to chat, it's like, or oh, Shivana. You're right. It's totally on the screen Whoa. right there. First pick, Teemo, also a great option. Mm. And you're, you're right about the Annie pick um, in general in that that was actually CA's last lane was Annie Caitlyn yeah. uh, when they got their win in the prior round. So no big deal. Their own time to make some choices. Actually, you know, interestingly, they, they, uh, NBD is the team that banned Gragas. They actually played it themselves. Jungle Gragas. We saw him a couple times here. Saw twice today as well. Yeah. It lost both games, if I remember, today mm -hmm. in the LCS. But that was that was some team-specific things, some misfortune you can't blame type Gragas. actions at the blue buff. I can blame I can blame I will dominate. Oh, for I can too. <laughs> not having a smite up when he went to do blue buff. That was, that was yeah. Fault. That's really greedy, and he got punished for it. I would I actually always take Wraith the wolves. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go for that. But the lock ins are here for no big deal. We've got the thresh for support, the jungle vi already. NBD picking some pretty safe picks, but strong ones overall. Yeah, I can see Curse Academy wanting to get a little bit more safety right now if they decide to go for something like Caitlyn. I wonder if Curse Academy is going to go with an all-dive type team mm -hmm. um, or if they're going to go with something more passive. Jaximus is a brand player. Oh, he yeah. played a lot of it in the past. A lot of but, it. Uh, he was just kind of selecting it. No need to lock it in yet because... He wants to be able to counterpick his mid lane if possible. Yeah, that's a good choice right there. It's not like someone can take brand away. Yeah, it's very unlikely. It's one of those yeah. few. It's like Boy Boy's a collie. Like, you'll get it if you want it. You can just pick it at the end to make sure the matchup's good. Um, what I'm kind of sad about is they did pick Caitlyn Curse Academy as a team that occasionally runs no AD carry. Uh, Fabi will play like Trindamir or something. Mm. And, and so it'll be like a melee AD carry, but they won't run a, a marksman in the We did see a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately, that's not here. But it's okay. They're going to still do something pretty fun. It's in their back pocket. Yeah. In case they need to bring it out later. Although, if they lose this one. Too late. Their yeah. pockets are empty. Their pockets will be empty. Literally and Best of one, of course. It's pretty punishing for these guys. But at the same time, six weeks later, they're going to be able to get into another Challenger Series. Exactly. Ladders reset. Play some rank fives. Get yourself back in there. No big deal, as it were. Here we go. These guys picking their next few. Jinx picked up. Actually, it's interesting. Caitlyn was the... the First picked AD, like the, the first AD carry pick with nothing removed from the pool. Yeah. Chris Cadby really wanted the pick. It's one of the new ADCs we've seen get played. Ziggs mid also, of course, a great choice as well. Yeah, I mean, even Cop from Curse. I was going to call him Curse Prime, but the, the LCS Curse team. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cop played a lot of Caitlyn as well. Mm -hmm. So there could be a little bit of Curse to Curse influence going down there. Annie amazingly makes it all the way through to the very end if they decide to pick this one. And they do. Yeah, I mean, NBD picked Thresh early on, so you figure you know you're going to play Annie in the first place. Mm -hmm. You don't have to first pick it anymore. Once it, so, yeah, heck, why not? Just take it whenever you want. All right. And let's do it. Yep, Darius picked up here. Yoshi did play that last time. That was against the Nasus, though. He decides, no, I'm going to punish a Shivana with Darius this time. So you like Darius, Chad. I like him in the bottom lane. Okay. Darius is cool in, in himself in the top lane. He's not <laughs> as explosive in the top lane because he's fighting against tanks. But really, he's uh, extremely gankable because he's going to want to play extremely aggressive early on against Rux. Uh, it's all about stacking up his bleeds, building tanky and cooldown reduction if he's in the top lane, and just outlasting people. Okay. Um, basically, Darius relies on people not knowing or figuring out how much damage his ultimate plus his bleeds together deal yeah. and kind of surprising people in that way. Like, you're 800 health. You're, you're, you're dead. Yeah, you're actually not allowed to get that low against Darius. Nope. You fall over and die. Get you. Poor Dragon Lady's gonna have maybe a hard time here. So, all right, the lamps are there. Pretty freaking aggressive there from No Big Deal. Mm. Uh, I love the dunks, Darius. I, you know, I'm a fan of, of like the thematic teams when you've got like Dunk Master Darius. I realize not the original Dunk Master, that was Yi, mm. but you've got enough guys who can jump up in the air and then slam down on you. Ziggs, Jarvan, Darius, etc. So, there they had Ziggs in that team comp as well, right? Yep. Yep. Two dunkers. Six Vi. Darius. Vi. Thresh. Eh. No. Doesn't count? Doesn't count. Damn. 
Jinx like it. doesn't count. I get, they, they got a couple executes, if you think about it. True. It's actually going to be most efficient for... And this is, this is the funny thing about Darius, actually. Uh, when he came out, everybody that played then remembers his instantly refreshing ultimate and him just jumping all over the place like crazy. And he used to yeah. have a, a small window where if the target died like a quarter second after you killed him, you'd get the reset anyway, Yeah. even if you didn't get the kill. Mm -hmm. That got taken out. Uh, now it's only if you get the last hit with the ultimate. Yes. So Darius ends up doing a lot of overkilling with his true damage ultimate. Yeah, uh, to guarantee it. And very rarely he actually he actually gets resets. And it used to be it would reset forever. And then one of the changes went that it would be every... Uh, he would be allowed to use it for the next 12 seconds, and then recently the next 20 seconds, and then it would go back on its normal cooldown. But what's interesting is when the change got made to not instantly refresh, but then instead go on a 12-second cooldown and then be on its full cooldown, his power didn't really change overall. Yeah. And I actually think that... This is a weird Darius theory. That if the reset mechanic got removed entirely... Mm -hmm. Darius might actually become a stronger champion overall. Why is that? <laughs> because so many people worry about getting the last hit with the ultimate, that they often don't do nearly enough damage. And if it got changed, the people weren't trying to last hit with it, mm -hmm. but instead get five bleed stacks and then get the full damage out of the ultimate regardless, you would do more damage and be a more effective champion for the most part. Huh. So in this game, since Darius and Jinx are on the same team, yeah. he should stack someone up Ultim as soon as he hits five stacks, and then let Jinx try and get the execute. Yeah, and actually I've seen that when we see Cho'Gath getting played. So many people yeah. try to last hit with Cho'Gath. With his feast. Yeah. Just get the damage out. It's yeah. so. It's like, what does Cho'Gath do? Six or eight hundred true damage, depending oh, on AP? Yeah, something massive. Yeah. And the thing is, they'll be at six stacks, and then still like have the cognitive, like, oh no, I need mm -hmm. to eat you like completely. If you don't all get in my belly... It's not. It's not fulfilling enough. Yeah. Um. So I, I like how it's thematic for Cho'Gath. It's not necessarily the most powerful way of doing it. I want to see how no big deal plays Darius. Mm. Almost everyone tries to execute with it. Yeah. Almost everyone does. Now, guys, as the teams load into the game, let's take a look at the two squads starting with Curse Academy. Yeah. So Curse Academy had a very tough game on Friday. Actually, they came away with a hard-fought 48-minute win <laughs> over Complexity Academy, even though they were the number four seed and Complexity was the 17 seed. Uh, Chris Academy also has a couple names on the roster that we saw in Champion Select that are familiar to LCS fans. Uh, Rux obviously played for mm -hmm. Curse a little bit in Season 3. He stepped in as support, actually, when Elements left the team way back in the spring. And obviously, their AD carry Fabi, the gatekeeper of Challenger, solo yeah. queue superstar, tends to play a crazy amount of Vayne and likes to hyper-carry games. Yeah, it plays some, at least used to play a bunch of Draven as well. And Either does amazingly or just awful. Yeah, so it's 15-0 or 0-15. Uh -huh. No matter what, he's going to figure out who's going to win the game. On the other side of the rift, though, is no big deal. They earned their spot in tonight's game by unfortunately breaking the Pink Ponies on Friday. That's it was a, a pretty name. impressive 34-minute win over the Ponies, yeah. though. Yeah, they had some big numbers in that one. Their mid laner, a near attack, went 2-0 and 11, or Anna attack. We're going to figure that one out as Kale. And their 80 carry, Jummy Chew, went 6-0 and 10 as Caitlyn. And Anna attack's claim to fame is actually second place in the best driven NA tournament. He barely lost out to Mega Zero. That's right, yeah. Yeah. I'd Second best Riven mm -hmm. NA not playing Riven. Wasn't even banned this game. No. No respect by Curse Academy. No need. He didn't play it. <sighs> the Ziggs makes more sense in mm -hmm. this. It does. Also, best Riven NA was played in the top lane. He's now a mid laner. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. and not, I mean, and not even everyone who played in that tournament was a top laner. You had guys like Cutie Pie joining in just to try what they could do. The best least in an A tournament happened as well. You yeah. had like a bunch of AD carry showing up. Hot Chachi G played in that tournament. Yeah. I'm a Cutie Pie. Um... Definitely beat him pretty soundly. Level one. <laughs> yeah. If any if anyone hasn't seen one of those things, oh, actually, they're fun. Yeah, those best driven A tournaments were pretty strong. I I do encourage you guys if you want to see Hot Shot GG play on a cutie by just search like the Vaws. If you want to see a near attack, which is Katarina backwards against Mega Zero, you can watch the game there too. I totally didn't realize it was Katarina backwards. Yeah, neither did I. Somebody told me. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably dictate the pronunciation as well. How would that dictate? Um, be so Katarina, right? Because the okay. eyes all have different sounds. So Katarina, a knee attack. Okay. So if you were to spell freak backwards, how would that dictate the pronunciation? Kerp. Because <laughs> H HP is not an F sound. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> shut. It works in my. Shut up. Logic. It works in my example. Okay. How about how about Jat backwards? Tash. Tash. Yeah. But so it doesn't make any J. sense because it, it, it would technically have to be Tash. 
Like, <laughs> you can't say a double T at the start of a word. It doesn't work At the end, way. it's fine, though, apparently. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're about to get into this game, though. Yeah. Um, Darius is definitely the thing that I want to watch for. Okay. More than anything, I want to see... Lock camera. Garen? I mean, I might do it personally. I might just kind of look at the minimap <laughs> and stare at Darius for a while. And he'll be like, and that was a great gank bottom line. I'll be like, yes, it was, freak. Darius got yes, three CS. <laughs> he <laughs> bled those minions out. <laughs> You know, I used to do yeah. that casting um, way back, like, season zero, because I didn't know it, like, enough strategically about League of Legends to, like, mm -hmm. say much about it, even though I was, like, a top-level player. And I would just, like, critique people's last hitting under turret, because I had nothing else to talk about. You know what? Last hitting under turret takes years and years of mastery. There's the zoom in on Yoshi yes! Darius. For, like, two seconds, but it was enough. Cameraman knows what he's doing. Good. Professional. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Jaximus' real name on live is only Jaximus. He yep. didn't pick the champion, let alone the skin. Uh, I'm disappointed that he's actually uh, same. I mean, same with the near attack, right? He didn't pick Katarina, but it's unfortunate. They don't even live up to their own names. What if Ziggs is actually Katarina in disguise? Uh, how did she get so short? I feel like it'd be really hard to do. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say something about flexibility, but it doesn't work. Nope. Okay. Sorry. It's okay that anyway, we're here. Um, no invades. These guys not pulling the evil geniuses. They're going to do the regular ward game. I want to see the Zed versus Ziggs matchup, though. That's a rather it's a rather high damage matchup, I'd have to say. And Ziggs is going to have to adjust his build accordingly to deal with Zed in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Not something Ziggs likes to do. He's really ro risen to prominence, obviously with a lot of buffs, but also with the fall of the Assassin mid laners. Because a lot of the Kha'Zix and the Zed would have just eaten him in yeah. lane early on. And I want to see if a near attack can can live through Jackson's Z. I want to say we saw this matchup before. Actually, I think it was it was it was Bjergsen or it was High, and it was against uh, Pobelter. I'm almost sure I remember seeing Zed versus uh, Pobelter Ziggs. They let him have it, and he got killed pretty early on. Could be wrong. I feel like I We've saw. We've definitely it. seen this matchup play out multiple yes. times. Yes, it can go either way because Ziggs has so much damage potential and very good zones of control that if he gets an edge on Zed. Uh, it's quite good. He'll go for the Seeker's Arm Guard most of the time mm -hmm. to avoid Zed crushing him. And maybe a couple Doran's Rings for mana and health in the way. Olaf going to grab his blue buff. Safe jungle starts here. Actually, both starting on the top side. It might pan out about three and a half minutes in when the junglers show up to the bottom half of the map. Annie waiting to stun people with that annoying 625 range. Yay for Annie, having more range than most AD carries. I thought it was 600. 625. Hmm. So she beats everyone but Caitlyn and, like, Cog with W active in late game Trist. All right. That's true. Or Jinx with a maxed Q. True. Yeah, I forgot about her. 700 range on her with rockets. I feel like, what, rank one rockets is 600? I think it's 25 per rank, so... I feel like not enough, not enough people rocket her ass. Or maybe people are so good now that they sort of realize... I've been Jinx noticing a lot more rocket her ass this weekend. Nice chain, though. Into the root as well. Fabi dropped dangerously low. Already flashing away. The flash in from Jummit. You bury your burn. Cleanse on the ignite. Oh. One more hit and no one's going to get it. Now, Sheep, do you have the damage? Well, Fog of War is going to make that hard. One more oh. attack. Down goes the kill. Now, Fabi, Still got flash. pick up the rest. You know is low. Look at these guys just playing them out. And Fabi gets the kill. Would you believe that? Fabi and Sheep dictating the game. They put themselves in a crazy situation, and then Jimmy Choo and Yuno just went a little bit too aggro. The minions, since the levels were so low in that situation, did the line share the damage at yeah. the end there. That was pretty fabulous. Mm, <laughs> yes, I guess so. I'm going to make them more painful and obvious. He's now becoming the gatekeeper of the Challenger series. That's good. Yeah. I like that. CA going to go all the way to the finals and be like, no. Although, wait, if you make it an LCS, though. No, this works. This works still. Never mind. Here we oh, go. Big gank. Nice jump away by Katarina Small backwards. Gank. Yeah. Force the satchel charge. Do you think that would hurt a little bit? No. Ziggs is immune to his own explosives. Okay. They're just water balloons anyway. No one ever nice. got hurt by a water balloon. Unless it was frozen. That would actually kind of suck. Just get hit with a block of ice. They, <laughs> I call, playing. they, they call those something, actually. I think there's a nickname for them. That's just. That's just being a jerk. Or like just That's like what I would call frozen it. snowballs. Aren't snowballs already frozen? <laughs> Big gang coming into the top lane, though. <laughs> uh oh, no, Darius, please live, Yoshi. Here we go. See, he's very gankable. He does have his flash up. It shouldn't be. Mm, it's all about dodging the axe. Yep. yep. Burn his flash forth, though, but stylish either way. Yoshi does survive this one. But of course, now if uh, T Tours shows back up, it's pretty much a kill. 
Yeah, Aerodactyl needs to spend a lot of time top lane if he wants to get Darius going. When Darius saw a lot of play in Season 2 earlier on, near when, when he was released, mm -hmm. it was often for the 2v2. Yeah. Uh, so Vine needs to spend a lot of time up there and almost force the 2v2 to happen, otherwise Darius is just a waiting gank target. And he pulls a lot of uh, jungle pressure in general. I remember, uh, actually, her first, it's going to be an attack. Eh, he's fine. Okay. But I remember Darius, like, pulls a lot of jungle pressure in general. Uh, season 2 Worlds, Darius played uh, Darius into Jace, saying, yeah, in a 1v1, it's a bad matchup, and I'm going to lose. Exactly. But if I get a jungle gank, like, even in the 2v2 with the jungle gank, like, I will win that fight. And so uh, you kind of have to show up with your jungler, or you're going to end up succumbing to the Darius overall. Yep. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I didn't understand you properly. You can see him here. Oh, you expanded on the point. That's okay. Uh, at least Rux is pushing up a little bit. Ooh. You can see it takes a while for Darius' damage to kind of stack up, and now he has the bleed stacks. Rux is really getting taken low. That's that's the way it works. Yeah, good and painful right there. All right, Yoshi, getting him down to half. This guy's trading blows. Doran's shield, no potions left in either of these guys. So once six happens, Darius gonna go Duncan. It's gonna be fun. Curse Academy, though, still able to push out the bot lane. Now, these guys, of course, got to back and got heck a lot more items. Vamp Steps are already for Fabi. I feel like this lane's going to keep going these guys' way. I think you'd be allowed to say hell if you want. I know. Yeah. I just I just don't. All right, Hecka. No, <coughs> Hella is definitely. You don't You don't get to not say Hella. You just did. You said Hecka something. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's why I made the comment in the first place, uh, man. Then, then, then I just, uh, I'm, I have shamed you, NorCal. I apologize. All right. I had a friend who used to say hell of cool just to be a troll. All right. <laughs> That's good enough. Oh. It's been a long week so far. We're good. It's been good, though. We've gotten a whole bunch of LCS out of the way, if you guys were checking that out. Lots of upsets in the North American LCS today. Mm -hmm. And the Challenger Series is just getting ramped up here. The winners of these two games today make it into the bracket phase, and that is best of three from then on out. So yeah. I definitely think Curse Academy is the big favorites. Maybe not even this game, but to do very well in this overall tournament because mm -hmm. these guys have been playing as a team for quite a while. You know, Curse Academy is a constantly changing roster. Quite successful. Fabi is always a strong player. You know, they must have a lot of synergy going by now. Ooh, Sheep pulled into the turret, takes one turret shot so far, eats a flame chopper. That's maybe okay for him to fire back onto Yuno. Do they have enough damage? You know they don't. He's going to get away with a flash. Curse Academy, just a bit of a damage trade. Yeah, now we might see some action right in the jungle. Aerodactyl going in. Rux missing the ulti, but Aerodactyl still only five burns his flash as well. And all right, well, Curse Academy got control of the red buff. Yeah, and that was mainly because Yoshi lost a bit of control in top lane. Rux disappeared. He didn't necessarily follow because they were not in position to do a 2v2. I think they were afraid of a 3v3 in there if Zed and Ziggs would have came at the same time. And they end up getting their redstone. Let's see if he can counter with anything of his own. Yoshi trying to control the blue buff here. He does have a level advantage over T-Tours, who I feel like can't stay around until he gets teammate help, which he kind of does, and you see Yoshi actually back out from this one. So no opportunities there, but we have the level 6 Darius, so it's going to be a thing to watch. It's interesting that Darius went for the Vamp Scepter. Yeah, Hydra you think maybe? I or just for I've seen Tiamat and Hydra Dariuses in the past when they have a lot of farm. Generally, Trinity Force is actually my favorite item on Darius. Because he really benefits from the move speed. Yeah. It's your favorite item in life. Well, yes. It's my favorite item on Darius. That's why I play Legend of Zelda so much. All right. I don't have to just play League of Legends. I can still get Triforce. It's pretty wonderful. RNA is not my favorite player. Because of the Triforce tattoos. Yep. Didn't want to like him before, but now I don't have a choice. Why didn't you he's actually like No, he's actually a cool guy. <laughs> I just... I realized that that couldn't like, be left standing. I was like, wow. Freak's a dick. He hates RNA for no reason. I'm just kidding, I'm sorry. Actually, I remember when RNA was a support player way back when I cast him in like season one. I remember back in, uh, this is probably a little off topic, unfortunately. That's fine. Back in WCG, Locust, our support player at the time when I was on Team Dignitas, had a scouting report on RNA. And like, I'm a cutie pie, and Boy Boy were just like terrified of him based on the explanation because he's like, he is crazy. He will just flash over a wall to try a gank. They're like, oh man, what's he going to do? He's just crazy. And it's like, well, he, he's actually crazy. Don't be scared of him. He just does really stupid things all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, during the game, they're a little bit intimidated. But, like, he would literally, at one point in the game, he flashed over a brush. And we, like, saw it because it was onto a ward. We're like, did he just flash into that ward? <laughs> and we just, like, backed away. <laughs> we're like, all right, that's fine. But he's gotten much better since then. 
<laughs> Definitely has. One of the one of the better junglers in Europe for sure. We're seeing actually Darius giant minion lead right now, 18 above. Got ganked, lost his flash, had no fear, and is like back to pushing Rux around. Yeah, he's Definitely pretty strong right now. You can see Rux doesn't have any sustain built up yet. He's just sitting on that Giant's Belt. So as long as Darius can stay in this 1v1 for a while, he'll keep lane supremacy and keep that farm lead. It's really completely on Curse Academy whether they want to just let that slide because they feel like Siobhan and Darius are mostly trading farm. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't, then obviously Yoshi's going to continue to be a little bit ahead. Okay, Jax was getting jumped on right now, though. Not much help from the Ziggs. He's going to answer back onto Aerodactyl. Do they have the damage? Kaelin as well. Actually gets knocked into range of Aerodactyl by the Satchel Charge. That's going to give Jax miss a kill right there and control over the Dragon. I like this move by Curse Academy. Instead of reacting to the Darius, they just go and take something else. They're not going in any 2v2. They wait out the Ziggs. That was close. Wow. Those are both really close, actually. They could still go in on this. I wouldn't be yep. surprised if NVD decides to actually try and fight this, but Curse Academy on the run. Yeah, Sheep takes some damage, but he's still going to be all right. Let's see. Bottom lane is regrouping back down there. And, you know, we talk about the lanes a little bit. Actually, Yoshi, is this, is this in kill range right now? Could he, like, all in Rux? The problem is he has to get his bleed stacks up. Mm. And Rux would also ultimate away. Yeah, the more point. Qs he lands, the the closer it gets. He might try to pull him in here and force an ult. There's a dev. Yeah. He gets another Q. Four stacks, I believe. Those are going to bleed off pretty soon, though. Curse Academy, so we talked about a little bit. Uh, Darius up about 15 CS. The dive in, good cleanse there. But now it's on to Yuno. He's stuck inside his own box, trying to run away. Sheep getting ignited, and that is a kill. Jinx gets excited. She's out. Jemmy Chu, good pick up there. Oh, I take the back. Yuno getting the kill credit. But still, nice for NBD. Yeah, getting something back, considering they were down a Vamp Scepter, mostly in that lane matchup, is big stuff. You wouldn't think that Fabi and Sheep would lose... Uh, Lose that trait after getting the two kills for none so early on in the lane. Now what happened is actually, it looks like Jemmy Chu backed for a BF sword before uh, the Curse Academy bottom lane ever did. So they're fighting BF sword to Vamp Scepter. And that'll usually give mm. you a lane win. Am I wrong? He no, had, Fabi had the Vamp Scepter the whole, uh, had the BF sword and a Vamp Scepter. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. Whereas uh, Jemmy Chu had the, just a long sword. So like damage wise, they were the same. Okay but just a uh, little bit more gold and atomization on Fabi. Life's still not as useful when you're dying in eight seconds. Uh, yep. More or less. Of course, actually, Fabi's the one who survived, so to be fair. Sheep. Yeah, Sheep, unfortunately, taken out, turned into wool, but he's back. We're going to be okay. Fabi back to the CS game right now. Of course, Dragon has given uh, Curse Academy a bit of a gold lead. NBD did rotate for the top lane turret, so they're finding things to do. That Darius lane right now, their big sort of like locus of power right there. He's doing well making things happen, but I don't know if they're going to convert much out of that. I want to see him in fights. Yeah. NBD is sticking close enough. It does seem like Curse Academy is in uh, the majority of the control in this game. Uh, if Jaximus is able to start roaming around, that's really going to be what decides this game, whether that is Fabi and Sheep turret diving with the Zed, or whether they want to get Rux going with Jaximus. Either one is going to show us a lot if Chris Academy can snowball this game. Well, here we go. Making a little bit of a move here as uh, both junglers showing up to this top lane tri brush. Olaf might sit on a ward soon. No, he hits behind the wall, so they don't know Olaf is around. But he gets pinged Danger. It's like Danger. We're okay for now. Yoshi taking a bad trade right now against Rux, but will he come back in? He's got the bleed stacks. No, the ulti in. Yoshi forced to run. Ignite is on him as well. And Rux is bleeding, but he's going to be fine. I'd say it's a more interesting top lane than usual. Yeah. Just because they're fighting Darius. A lot. They're trading a lot of damage with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, Darius, I think, is the first champion with a recall animation. Really? I think so. And it, hmm. it snuck under the radar because it wasn't a very obvious recall animation. He just Sticks lifts his axe, his axe up. to the sky. Yeah, and people noticed it with Draven, which came right after. And I was like, oh no, actually, Darius came first. I was like, oh, okay. Ooh, blue buff. That's Aerodactyl, but it does get denied from an attack. I yeah. believe you. Axe in the air. Darius, yep. first recall animation. Yep. Someone asked me that about a week ago, and I was like, I think it was Darius. And then that made it much more easy to recall here. Mm. Random everyday life helps me cast sometimes. Word association as well. Yes. Helps you finish sentences. Yep. You know, Jat, sometimes we finish each other's. Sandwiches? Yes. I'm not sure. Yeah, you put the mayonnaise on, I put on the beef, you put on the cheese. I don't know. I don't even like mayonnaise. I don't know why we led with that. Whatever. Minions going down. Look at this. Perfect CS. Jummy Chu. Good job. He waited. Had enough attack damage. 
Once you have about mm -hmm. plus 20 AD from items, uh, 25, 30 roughly, actually, yes. uh, you, you were can talking one shot caster really. minions. Yeah. It becomes almost comical the last hit of turret. Like, I also like how the turrets are fairly consistent in the way they deal damage now. You can really tell when someone... Um, it's like a mini game every time you go down to farm. If a big wave hits your turret, like what's going to happen to Rux if he had a turret? Uh, you get the first one pretty easily. <laughs> it's going to help you get the mini game going. But yeah, just try, trying to do your mini game and farming all the the minions is actually quite challenging. Mm -hmm. You can see the pros almost never miss. Uh, focus on that every time you're in a game and you see minions coming through to your turret. It's it's an incredible amount of gold over the course of a game if you can get all of them. Yep, melee minions. The turret hits it twice. You'll get it almost no matter who you are, with very few exceptions. Two auto yep. attacks and any champion auto attack, and you're fine. Casters yep. always need help of some kind. Yeah, whether you it's like want the support to hit it. Yeah. Oftentimes you see people use spells on it. Mm -hmm. There's a few strange spells you can use, like if you have a really low damage spell, if you're on Cassiopeia or something, you can throw a W on right as you're auto attacking, but don't let it sit too long, otherwise the turret will kill it. Yeah. Some weird stuff that you have to do. It's really champion dependent. Or like if you're Shivana, you have your burnout, take it for like a second. Yeah. It's Rux has been doing stuff. that actually. Mm -hmm. But now he has Sunfire, so that's kind of gone for him. I've actually learned which uh, mages have instant damage spells. So Swain's Q, for example, deals damage the instant you press Q. Yep. Uh, whereas his E, like I don't, I don't know if it even ticks at the beginning, but you've got to like get the projectile out. Mm. So like you can like auto Q as Swain, you'll get casters. You can like E early then auto. Um, it gets really weird when you have Blade of the Ruin King, mm -hmm. because you don't do enough damage when they're low, but you'll overkill it when they're full health. So you have to somehow get two attacks in, and you can't hit early or you'll kill it with percent health current damage, and it'll die to the turret. Same thing used to happen with Jarvan until his passive was adjusted a little bit. It yep. was like impossible for him to kill the ranged minions at turret. Poor guy. But not anymore. And it looks like Curse Academy has taken a bit more control of this game. You can see Fabi finished off the bottom turret, and now they're actually using him as a soul split pusher. He's very experienced in this role because he plays a lot of Vayne, mm -hmm. and Vayne is typically the split pusher that can then duel an AD carry. Caitlyn doesn't have the same dueling potential, but he still knows how to position himself as a solo person and stay safe. Yeah, and at least he can ward for himself. That helps a little bit here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you can actually chain all of your spells in with your net. You don't have to just EQ. You can EW, which is sometimes way better. Because the slow helps them not avoid the trap, and you can often combo into a root. I haven't seen anybody do that uh, in pro play, necessarily. Yeah, I feel like I don't either. I feel like I don't see a lot of mid-fight mid traps. Yeah. Either because they're not noisy enough that I see them cast it, or just... Because they're certainly good players. Like I'm mm -hmm. sure they're aware of all the combos. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've noticed that Needle players are really good at spreading traps out down the sides of the lane, though. Oh, yeah. That when a fight breaks out, someone will eventually hit one, but they'll almost yeah. never get taken by minions. All right. Another dragon for Curse Academy. 2-0 yep. on this. 4,000 gold in the lead. That's actually pretty good at this point. Mm -hmm. Low kills, but good objective control. Winning in turrets as well. Yoshi didn't really make much of an impact up with Darius. Yeah. Yet. He will. Pentakill, calling it. The Vamp Scepter is still a little, a little questionable for me. But yeah, he wanted to sustain, I guess, but now I he's know. items behind. Yeah, he did out farm Shivana. They traded turrets. Uh, I think if a fight happened right now, he can still make an impact, but an air attack would have to get a lot of damage down. He's looking not very healthy. Yeah, here we go. The dive gonna come in anyway. Teacher is running towards the front. Yuno taking a bit of pain. Ooh. Jinx ulti does not even land here as that I saw. And here we go. Yoshi going for the pain, trying to take down Annie doing what he can after this fight. We're going to have a quick game pause, but Yoshi still in the battle. Does go down. Looks like a two for one overall. NBD does come out ahead. All right, guys, we got to pause real quick. And solved. We're now back into the game. Thank you for listening to us rant about almost nothing league-related. We almost always rant about beta, I've noticed. <laughs> you know, being nostalgic is one of the coolest things I've found in game communities. Like, yeah. Knowing where this game came from and what has changed is is always an interesting topic of conversation. We'll, uh, we'll delve deeper if we get another pause, actually. I do like League stories. They're really enjoyable. Just all, all the old, like, sit on the porch, listen up stories. But we're back into the game. NBD, they do take the mid-outer turret. Two to two in turrets here, of course. Curse Academy still up two dragons and a champion kill. To recap, guys, if you don't remember what's going on, if you tuned in late to the stream, whatever, what have you, this is a match, a best of one. The winner goes into top eight. The winner of this plays Determined Gaming. We saw them play against Evil Geniuses, lose 0-3 there. But this is going to be uh, their next opponent, whichever team wins here. Top lane, Darius is an awesome bro. Got a kill and assist last fight. And overall, fun game going on. Yeah, it's gotten fairly close. I think Curse Academy, they've controlled two of the dragons, if any of you are just tuning in now. 
Fabi and Sheep actually got a very early double kill in the lane. So Fabi's going to be looking to become a force later on in this matchup. But they've actually lost a lot of their lane presence since getting that double kill. Yes, they took the tower, but they had a 2v2 fight where they actually ended up suffering a death. So not everything is going right for Chris Academy. Not everything. And we had one minor fight where NBD went 2-1 to one in the battle in just kind of the middle of the jungle. So these guys definitely trading blows right here. Jackson is picking up the money. He is a 1-0-1 Zed. I feel like his split push scariness is going to grow over time, especially when he completes that last Whisper. He should be able to take on almost anyone from the other team. I feel like Darius couldn't beat a Zed. I don't think he'd kill him in time. I feel like. Right now, Darius for Zed? Hmm. Right now, without uh, last Whisper, maybe he's all right. Yeah. He's 12, okay. so it's a really good power spike. But I just feel like three items for both these guys... Yeah, I think there comes a point where Zed becomes uh, more potent. Okay. Well, NBD looking for the bottom lane here. Looks like they have rotated first. Four people going to be here as Darius holds the mid lane. This turret, pretty much a full health, but there's no one here to defend this, really. The rest of the rotation's coming in now. Annie's joined up with Zed. Jacksmith and Sheep here. They're trying to kill the minions, and looks like NBD's going to flinch here and not quite go for it. That was the reason we paused. Yoshi has reconnected, of course, already. The game's continuing on. It's an artifact right there. Not something that was actually happening. He's good to go. Coming back up towards his top lane, trying to stop Rux. He's fallen a little bit behind in farm because of those team fight shenanigans that just happened. I feel like Rux is actually getting to that late game scaling point where Darius is going to be scared of him. So Yoshi actually needs to find more team fight situations where he can start bleed stacking multiple people and just help Jinx get those executes. Let's see if he can do it. NBD with a good siege on his bottom lane. Decent damage here. That turret down just a couple hundred health right now. Next time someone's left alone, it's going to be going down. Rux, good rotation to mid. No one here to stop him at all. Curse Academy looking to kill this building down. Good stuff right there. Just a freebie. Kill this building down. Yeah, they're kill pressuring the around the map. <laughs> it's because Rux had pushed so much in the top lane. Uh, he just rotated mid, and NBD had nobody to come up and match that. An air attack had gotten a little bit distracted and ended up going to the bot lane. NBD's trying to get some of this turret pressure back, but they're just uh, falling a bit behind now. And Yoshi just seems to be having a worse time killing off these minion waves. You talked about Rux uh, just pushing top so hard, and Yoshi was, unable, was basically unable to move. Um, and, you know, to kind of add to all this, Rux is actually just... He's going to be really big. 170 minions going towards the Blade of the Ruin King as well. I mean, I feel like Rux is going to have a pretty good time trying to dive towards the back line if he gets to. Yeah, things are looking way up for Curse Academy right now. Uh, everything absolutely going the way. I think especially once they get Static Shiv, since they're already substantially out-pushing NBD, they have a very good push comp at the moment. You know, Rux on Shivana, almost an unstoppable split push at this point for anyone on NBD. Jaxmus has enough damage, and an Aerotech actually did go for the Athenians and Holy Grail with the Seeker's Arm Guard, so there's no Zhonyas he can't get in range of Zed. Then you just add in Caitlyn Olaf, both those guys, extremely good range wave clear. All three slots so far for Curse Academy here can push through extremely well. And NBD, despite having Ziggs, who is one of the best counter pushers in the game, just don't have enough across the map to keep the minions away from their turns. They don't just yet, so Curse Academy, the outer layer already been peeled away. Look for the second layer soon enough. They're actually looking to control the dragon. Sorry, the Baron a fair bit. Two pink wards around Baron. Uh, another one on the, the root in. So that is three of them already put down. Using the sweeper, using other wards to spot the ways in. Looks like they're baiting right around the wall here. Near attack gets seen. The flash in from Sheep. A near attack. Goodbye right there. Sheep getting the kill credit. Two, two, and two on that Annie. Yeah, it's been a strong initiation there. And especially with the steel potential of Ziggs down, they just have to pick off Vi or zone him from the fight in order to secure this Baron. Let's see how well they zone out Aerodactyl or whether they're willing to disengage in a 50-50 trade here. Let's see what they do right there. Vi is nearby. No one's probably going to zone him out. Of course, his team's still here to go for this one. The jump over from Zed goes for the ulti. Can they one-shot Vi in time? Health bar is still going down for Curse Academy, but they can turn back in this one. Jackson is flashing over the wall. Jinx ulti is going to claim a kill, but it's Baron in a one-for-one. One. Yeah, they were just able to get that Baron. Good job killing Aerodactyl. It does seem like the connectivity issues continue for Yoshi. In the past. No, they're still happening. He disconnected during that fight. Mm. It's there's there's the online rules as well, since these are played online that if you're 
you only get 10 minutes of pause time for these guys, and I believe they've went close to through it. So if he has connectivity issues, it is the individual's responsibility as far as these rules go, unfortunately, to hold their own connection. And it seems like he's reconnecting in uh, a little bit more often than MBD would like. They were losing when it started, yeah. but it has persisted. That's a fair point. Okay, so... We'll see these guys can regroup from all of this. A 7,000 gold lead, though, puts Curse Academy in a pretty good spot. Set up the wards, set up the play, traded kills, got rid of the enemy jungler, and gave themselves a high percentage smite here. Randuin's Omen plus Ancient Golem here on the Olaf jungle. They've got just, they've got a force to dive with. They've got an AD carry who can sit there and put out the damage from the back. And a bunch of anything split pushers. Curse Academy, pretty well rounded lineup right now. Yeah, Curse Academy looking to shove in as many lanes as they possibly can. It's about an 8,000 gold advantage. Reconnect. Yoshi reconnects again. Come Very on, unfortunate. Buddy, stay back this time. I believe. You've got to believe. You believe hard enough, and they show back up. you got to believe pretty hard in this case. They are down substantially. Darius, even if he wasn't having connection issues, has a very weak late game when compared to Shivana. Uh, all the pushing advantages are accumulating for Curse Academy. The Baron is up. These are very hard things to come back from if you're NBD. Definitely are right here. Curse Academy still putting the pressure on. Sweeper used to get rid of some of these wards, make sure that jungle is blacked out as they go for that second ring of turrets. They're still at three right now, but four, five, and six are right in front of them. Zed in the bottom. Shivana with the rest of the team up top. Aerodactyl not quite finding a fight right here. Yuna's going to go and finds the pull. Teacher is going to pop the ulti to get away from this one. So Olaf is safe, but loses a cooldown. That was kind of cool looking. Yeah. The death end is just kind of disappearing as soon as it almost like it got zapped or something. Yeah, it's it's the cool, new particle for cool when you death remove particle, it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I like yeah. it a lot. It it sort of shatters with thresh green mystic energy. Ooh, sheep gets pulled up there. Oh, could nice see a big backwards. fight here. That is a good timbers. Good by Fabi gets the kill picked up. Pretty easy one. All things considered for Curse Academy. Maybe Yuno shouldn't have gotten in that one. Unfortunately, that whole jungle was warded. Uh, it's really hard the for them to get control right now. There's yeah. pink wards in the jungle. The catch potential of the sheep is too high, and they just cannot seem to get Yoshi back in this game. Very unfortunate for these guys, but the pressure is still just going to continue for Curse Academy. The dive in by Rux slows down Jemichu and just goes down. Fabi on a rampage 4 0 and 4. Aerodactyl stunned up as well. That's another kill picked up here. Curse Academy likely to get some turrets. The near attack also goes down. Jack has lost some health, but very much worth it there. Yeah, this looks like it could be close to the end here. Curse Academy just got a whole bunch of kills. They still have the Baron buff, and they're just pushing down the Inhibitor Turrets. Inhibitor Turret number one under Siege. Four turrets to two. CA, 10 to four in kills as well. Inhib number one also going to go down just 27 and a half minutes in. Jackson is still pressuring the bottom lane as well. Back in a way to play this one a little bit more safe. Oh, there it is. That's a surrender. That is a surrender. NBD dropping out. Curse Academy. Moving on forward, they will be playing against Determined Gaming, I believe, in the very next week. But all the round of eight matches are, are either next week or the week after. Yeah, they're going to be always right after the North American LCS on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a very unfortunate ending Yeah, right there for those guys. I'm, I know they're not going to be happy about that one. Um, but Curse Academy was winning that game mm -hmm. previously. It's uh, it's just the tough nature of this tournament sometimes. Yeah, it's funny, very unfortunate for these guys, but Chris Academy, of course, putting on a pretty good amount. And by the way, that's going to be February 1st, that game. So mm. uh, two weeks from yesterday, if I have my days proper.